I'm John Martin. The topic of this video, monkey cytomegaloviruses and polio vaccines. By way of background, I'm a pathologist with boards in anatomic and in clinical pathology, subspecialty training in immunopathology and in medical microbiology. I previously worked at the National Cancer Institute and the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. From 1976 through the early 1981, I was head of the Viral Oncology Laboratory in the FDA's Division of Virology. Regarding my research, I describe viruses which differ from the viruses from which they are derived in that they do not evoke inflammation. This is because of the deletion or mutation of the genes that code for the relatively few viral components that are normally targeted by the cellular immune system. I refer to this immune evasion mechanism as stealth adaptation. Stealth adapted viruses were described in a major pathology journal in 1994 and subsequently detected in patients with various neurological and psychiatric illnesses. This research was resisted by the public health officials when it became clear that certain stealth adapted viruses arose from the cytomegalovirus of African green monkeys. Monkeys are used to make polio vaccines. The kidneys are obtained from the monkey and the cells cultured in large tissue culture flasks. The polio virus is added to those cells to produce the vaccine. Initially, rhesus monkeys were used from India. These were discontinued in the 19, early 1960s when it was realized that most rhesus monkeys are infected with simian virus 40 and that that virus was entering into the vaccine. At about the same time, a second major change occurred. The initial vaccine was that developed by Dr. Jonas Salt. It was using the wild type or disease causing virus. This virus had to be inactivated using formaldehyde before it could be made into the vaccine. The approach by Dr. Albert Sabin was different. He could modify or attenuate the polio virus so that, except in very rare cases, it would not cause disease in the recipients and yet would still provide protection against the polio virus. Now, both rhesus monkeys and African green monkeys are commonly infected with cytomegalovirus, a type of herpes virus. Indeed, in 1972, a joint study by the FDA and the polio vaccine manufacturer was undertaken. The kidneys from 11 monkeys were cultured without adding any polio vaccines to see if any other virus might grow out. In every kidney, the monkey cytomegalovirus grew out from the cultures. In other words, the monkeys being used to make polio vaccines were infected with cytomegalovirus and the cytomegalovirus was present in the kidney cells obtained from the monkeys. This information was never made public. I reported the finding of African green monkey simian cytomegalovirus in a patient with a chronic fatigue syndrome and in a patient with a bipolar psychiatric illness to the FDA and to the polio vaccine manufacturer in 1995. I submitted proposals to the CDC and to the FDA requesting collaborative studies to look for these viruses in the human populations. Both proposals were rejected. I also presented information at an Institute of Medicine meeting in November of 1995, but this report was largely whitewashed. It's not that FDA hasn't responded slowly. Beginning in around 1996, the discussion ensured about switching back to the inactivated polio vaccine ostensibly because of the few cases of polio that were developing from the attenuated vaccine of Dr. Sabin. But I was asked on the side, did I think that formaldehyde would inhibit stealth adapted viruses? The switch did occur in the last dose of the live virus vaccine in the United States was administered in the year 2000. In 2002, the FDA took the initiative of looking back to see if there might be cytomegalovirus in some of their polio vaccines. Using a molecular technique called the polymerase chain reaction, they could identify one batch of polio from 1972 and two batches from 1976. 
each of these vaccines, each of these three vaccines had DNA of African green monkey simian cytomegalovirus. They said they could not culture any virus and it may not be able to replicate um, for reasons that were not explained. In 2003, the British equivalent of the US FDA did a larger study. They could identify 62 batches of polio vaccines made in the kidney cells of African green monkey. In 52 of the 62 batches, there was DNA of African green monkey simian cytomegalovirus. The English could go further. They could take polio vaccines made in the rhesus monkeys and show that they too commonly had the DNA of rhesus cytomegalovirus. What made their study particularly interesting is that they included the CHAT, C-H-A-T, vaccine in their analysis. This is the vaccine produced in rhesus monkeys by Dr. Hilary Koprosky and tested extensively in chimpanzees in Africa and in African children. Dr. Albert Sabin had privately communicated to Dr. Koprosky and then later published evidence that this CHAT vaccine had a contaminating virus. Dr. Sabin said he saw it in all 10 experiments that he conducted and even when he diluted the CHAT vaccine one in a hundredfold. So the report from the English, similar to the report from the American, that they could not culture virus from vaccines is probably an indication that they were not particularly good at their culturing techniques for monkey cytomegaloviruses. I have repeatedly requested that public health officials confirm the existence of stealth adapted viruses. They've refused to do so. In 2002, I was told that my continued clinical testing for these viruses was putting the nation's health in immediate jeopardy. The argument is other virologists would have to do the testing. This overlooks the fact that in the 1970s there was a child in Atlanta, Georgia, who had an unexplained non-inflammatory brain illness. A brain biopsy was obtained, a virus was cultured from that brain biopsy, it wasn't characterized fully at the time, but was subsequently shown to be African green monkey simian cytomegalovirus. To expect academic virologists to take on this task is asking too much. A friend contacted a very prominent virologist. His response to being asked to test for these viruses was no way would he risk losing all of his NIH grants. He might furtively test for the viruses in a laboratory that he had an association with in China. The responsibility for testing is clearly that of public health officials. One final example, there was a businessman. He came from an overseas trip back into Florida. A week later, he became sick. He was concerned he may have picked up HIV. His HIV testing was negative. He realized that there was an infection when his father visited and a week later his father came down with a similar debilitating illness. He tried to contact me, couldn't, but did read about the research. He pretended that he was a veterinarian and that he wanted to have blood samples from monkeys being tested. He um, had blood drawn from himself and from his father. He used the names of the dogs of his neighbor as the names of monkeys sent them to this animal testing laboratory to do the polymerase chain reaction for monkey cytomegaloviruses. The results came back clear cut. They were both positive for African green monkey simian cytomegalovirus, negative for other species of cytomegaloviruses. He made contact with me. I conveyed these results to the Centers for Disease Control. The only testing they would agree to was to have a blood sample from that gentleman sent to a private laboratory in Atlanta. They did not want to handle his blood. The private laboratory attempted to do cultures and reported back negative results and then the CDC dropped the ball. If there's any message from this video is to raise the stake somewhat, to open up discussion about polio vaccines, the fact that some of the polio vaccines were made in cytomegalovirus infected monkeys, that some of the vaccines that were uh, used do have the DNA of the, cyto, of the monkey cytomegaloviruses and that 
patients should be tested for these viruses. I hope this message will be conveyed in the current debate about vaccine safety. Thank you very much.